In this video, we'll take a fresh look at the normal distribution through the lens of probability. Do you know how much you weighed when you were born? It turns out that birth weight is an important predictor of a baby's future health and chances of survival. So it should come as no surprise that we've got lots of data on the weights of newborns. It turns out that, like many real-life phenomena, newborn weights are normally distributed, which means that they tend to follow that characteristic bell curve shape that we first saw when we talked about standard deviation. The distribution has a mean of 7.5 pounds and a standard deviation of 0.7 pounds. This means that, for example, about 68% of newborns will have weights between 6.8 and 8.2 pounds, one standard deviation from the mean on either side, as you'll recall from the empirical rule. But we can frame the same statement as a probability. If we pick a random newborn, there's about a 68% chance that its weight will be between 6.8 and 8.2 pounds. Similarly, there's about a 95% chance its weight will be between 6.1 and 8.9 pounds, and a 99.7% chance it'll be between 5.4 and 9.6 pounds. By the way, this area we've been looking at in these diagrams isn't just a cute way to visualize these probabilities. Whenever you have a continuous random variable, like with the normal distribution, the area under the curve is the probability. So, for example, the area under the entire bell curve is always 100%, or 1. That's the same basic idea as all the probabilities in a discrete distribution adding up to 1. Continuous distributions lend themselves well to a lot of math, because you can use all the tools of calculus to understand their nice properties. The downside of the normal distribution, though, is that it's much harder to write down an expression for those probabilities. I mean, just look at this. So instead, we usually just stick to calculating them numerically using technology. For example, suppose we want to find the probability that a random newborn has a weight that's less than or equal to 8 pounds. Or put another way, we're looking for the proportion of newborns with a weight of at most 8 pounds. In Excel, we just type norm.dist, short for normal distribution, followed by our 8 pounds, then the mean of 7.5 pounds, the standard deviation of 0.7 pounds, and finally a 1 to indicate we want a cumulative probability of all the weights up to 8 pounds, just like we did with the binomial distribution earlier. If we run that calculation, we get about 0.762 which means that about 76.2% of newborns weigh 8 pounds or less. By the way, take note, we always use cumulative probabilities for continuous distributions. In fact, it turns out the probability of getting any one value exactly is pretty much zero. If you think about it, you're never going to find a newborn whose weight is exactly 8 pounds on the nose. Chances are, it'll be just the slightest bit off, even if the scale can't really detect it. The effect of this is that if you want the probability that a newborn is strictly less than 8 pounds, you get the exact same answer as before when it was less than or equal to 8 pounds. The equal to doesn't make much of a dent. What if we want the probability that a newborn weighs more than 8 pounds? For that, we can just use the complement rule and find 1 minus the probability that the weight is less than or equal to 8 pounds, which gives about 23.8%. And based on what we said before, that's the same as the probability that a newborn weighs greater than or equal to 8 pounds. Again, the equal to doesn't really matter here. Okay, what if we want the probability that a newborn's weight falls between two values, say 7 pounds and 8 pounds? Well, we can find that by starting off with the cumulative probability for up to 8 pounds, and then taking away the cumulative probability for up to 7 pounds. What's left will be the area between those two values, which is exactly the probability we're looking for, about 52.4%. We can even ask the reverse question. What if we want to know the cutoff point where 75% of newborns are under that weight, 
what we call the 75th percentile birth weight. In this case, we know the cumulative probability, 75%, and what we're looking for is the weight that'll give us that probability. To find that weight, the command is norm.inv, which stands for normal distribution inverse. We start with the cumulative probability, 0.75, make sure to enter it as a decimal, followed once again by the mean and standard deviation, and we end up with about 7.972. So that tells us that 75% of all newborns have a weight of 7.972 pounds or less. So wait, what's the difference between norm.dist and norm.inv? How do you tell them apart? It's all about inputs and outputs. With norm.dist, you know the data value ahead of time, and it tells you the cumulative probability. But with norm.inv, you know the cumulative probability, and it'll tell you the data value that corresponds to it. To get some practice, try coming up with your own questions that can be answered by each one of these functions to make sure you have them straight.